Alrighty. Hey guys, it's me, Sergeant Pepper, here for some more YouTube videos. So, welcome to Update 5 Satisfactory! I assume you guys have been playing it already. Hope you've been enjoying it. Oh, man, this Update to Satisfactory is amazing. So amazing. Um, so this this here, I'm uh, going to be kind of making a, a let's play through my new save game. Uh, we're looking at it right now. This is about, what, 4 or 5 days, 30 hours of gameplay since I started this save. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to keep you guys up with it, sort of show you what we're doing, uh, tell you what we have planned next, and, uh, just share all the goofy, cool, and weird things, uh, I've been finding the update so far. So, um, m maybe I'll actually try to cover some questions, like, uh, one thing I want to try to cover in this, uh -huh. This is something I always struggle to do, is sort of explain um, base layout, organization, how to keep things tidy, stuff like that. Uh, it's definitely the struggle of satisfactory. And um, yeah, I want to try to give you guys some insight in how I do that for my factories, so maybe it'll help you in designing yours. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I can do. Um... So, so right now, we are working on phase two. So phase one for the space elevator, 50 smart plates. That was easy peasy. Um, I can actually give you guys a look at that. We will go back and look at the previous days in the factory. Um, but let's just catch you guys up to where I am right now. So this is phase two. So we're making the three pieces, the versatile framework, the um, smart plates, and that third item. Uh. Automated wiring. Ha. Ah. Got it. See, I knew it was in there somewhere. Um. I could see them all. There, there they are. And flowing into the space elevator slowly but surely. Uh, this is all a sort of temporary setup we got going on here right now. Uh, just just getting the space elevator fed, you know. Once I get this up and done, I can finally start doing oil, which is going to unlock packaged fuel, gas mask, jet pack, trucks, trains. Oh man, can't wait for that! Can't wait for that. It's going to be awesome. Um, so what's making these parts? Oh, just, just some simple stuff, really. I'll give you guys a quick little looky look. Um, for the automated wiring and the, uh, smart plates. Yeah, it looks like we're doing the smart plates. Got an assembler each. Um,. So, you can see my hub is down there. That's where we have our storage, sink, space elevator. And then here on the left side, on the east wing, if you would, um, we basically have copper going on down there. Uh, we got cables happening. I've brought some Caterium over. You can see our Caterium highway right over yonder. Actually, looks like we could use some more Caterium on there. Uh, so we make the quick wire up there. We do AI limiters. Rush AI limiters for smart splitters, by the way. Gotta, that's really super easy to do. It's just quick wire, copper sheets, AI limiters, man. Perfect. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously we do the automated wiring here because we've already got the cable. Uh, I have the stators coming in from one of our trucks. Tractors. Technically, it's a tractor. Uh, this is our second one, the first one being the steel. So we have this guy here. As you can see, been making some use of the paint, making the roads and stuff. Uh, the tractors have been good. 
Steve, get off the road, man. You're gonna get run over. Um, the one tractor, the first tractor worked really, really good. The the second tractor, since I've added it, it it's been been some problems. Been some problems. Uh, I can see on the radar one of the tractors is moving. We'll have to go and check and see if the other one is. Uh, they've been running out of fuel, annoyingly enough. Um, a quick little show here. The end of the line for every item goes into a smart splitter with overflow programmed. This way, I can take every item, once it's done with its manufacturing, jam it onto a belt, and use this belt as our storage belt, effectively. So you can see we have it like right here. Everything goes onto this belt and it loops through the storage and then into the resource sink. Um, we do have a bit of rotors going on in the center here. A little, a little rotor factory. I almost do kind of want to push it out, but I'm still kind of at ends with myself on the whole base planning thing. So yeah, this, this side, it's much like the copper side, except this is pretty much all iron, so it's a little more dense, you know? You just do more with iron, especially in the early game. Uh, but same, same basic principles, you know? Just keeping it real simple. Uh, smart splitter after the last assembler with the overflow for the storage belt. Nice and easy. A uh, quick look at the storage, in case you guys are interested at all. It did a couple of little fancy things with the beams and stuff, just, you know, messing around with the looks. Actually, I put some lights in, some lights in up there. Uh, did, did little signs, little square signs for, uh, for the storage too, it's nice, I like it. Looks, looks cool. Uh, I don't have enough bins. I'm gonna have to expand this. I'm gonna have to, like, push it out further. Uh, we got a little bit of quartz over there. Need the silica and stuff to build now. Uh, coal power with the skyline for the coal. So yeah, super simple there, you know? Um... Again, each smart splitter, the, the overflow function, guys, again, can't can't stress enough the the convenience of smart splitters. You can get them super early, too. Uh, we'll, we'll do a reverse time lapse and load up the previous saves so I can show you guys the progression. But uh, basically, Caterium and the MAM, um, smart splitters, like, right there. It's literally just AI limiters, which is just quick wire copper sheets. Uh, reinforced plates like it's you, you can do this you can do this like right in the early game and uh, it helps so much with uh, I, I, it's the only way to do mixed item belts you know that's yeah and overflow is just the best you know so super simple like but it's it's such an OP strat. It just it's great, and, and the the nice hidden benefit of this too. Maybe it's not so hidden. Is you really feed your sink. Uh, so in update five, you're gonna notice you you just got oodles and and dozens and millions and all these things, all these things you want to spend tickets on. Like I'm I'm constantly looking for more tickets so I can buy more doors and lights and glass walls and curved roofs and. Uh, with with this, um, your whole factory constantly keeps on chugging, and you're just making yourself coupons, which is exactly exactly what you want to do. So yeah, I really recommend thinking about that strategy. Okay, well, looks like one tractor is still stuck. I was really hoping this wasn't going to be a thing, but let's go take a quick, quick look at that, and then. Um, 
And then we'll go ahead and I've taken a save game every day that I've played. So we'll go through. Oh, is it, is it moving? No, I don't think it is. I think that's just me. Uh, we'll go through and look at each day and I'll try to explain to you guys the state of things and hopefully you can just see how we've progressed a bit. Oh, a little coffee there. And if you guys come up with, you know, anything, any sort of questions or ideas, you know, things you'd like to see, things you want explained, uh, just let me know, eh? Just let me know. Just leave it down in the comments. Come tell me in a stream one time or... You know. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to... Throw out one of these videos on a regular schedule. And sort of keep you guys posted with my playthrough. Uh, this is the first truck station. Really just kind of experimenting with all the new cosmetics. Even got some street lamps hooked up. Went the extra mile to uh, throw the wires on the side and underground and stuff. So, ooh, actually, this is... This is a little more visible than I realized... Didn't, didn't notice that before. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, shame too. So with update 5, they boasted a bunch of changes and improvements and differences in the tractor AI. Um, you know, to do with all the vehicles, really. It really is an improvement, I can see it. Like, it is good, but I'm still having problems for, for reasons I can't quite fully understand yet. Sometimes my tractors are not refueling themselves, and like this guy, for instance, he is just left his station where he should have refueled at, but he didn't. He didn't refuel, and he ran out of fuel, and now he's stuck here. So I'll give him some fuel. I'll give him a lot of fuel. And he'll run for a bit. And he'll even grab fuel sometimes. But sometimes he doesn't. And he'll just run out and sit there. But there was a change made to where these guys, they only grab the amount of fuel that they need. So they're rolling up to these stations with like just one or two coal left in their inventory. And uh... Right now, I, I kind of wish... Uh, oh, yeah, that's our steel factory over there. Actually, make staters over there, too. Um, I, I really wish they, they would just fuel up like they used to. Just take as much fuel as they can, anytime they can. I feel like I wouldn't have issues right now. Yeah, I originally planned on using a lot of trucks and tractors and things take advantage of the new AI, but now I'm starting to uh, wonder if I actually want to do that. So yeah, I'd say that pretty much takes care of the current state of things. Um, going forwards, we're just going to complete that space elevator mission. Um, I'm gonna buy maybe a few cosmetic things. I kind of want to start on walls and stuff for some parts of the factory. Uh, I don't have any walls or roofs yet. I'd love to get that going. I think that'd look cool. And then, yeah, just starting into oil. So that's probably gonna be... Probably when you guys see the save again, it's probably gonna be another week or so, and we should have oil. I don't know if we'll have anything up for trains. But we'll see, we'll see. I'm planning to, as soon as I get the the jetpack and gas mask, I'm planning to uh, really go out, grab some alternative recipes and slugs. Those are, those are the things I really want. Really, really can't wait to do trains though with signals. That's gonna be awesome. A lot of train crashes we had in our previous save. 
Okay, and I guess I will also um, give you guys a little show around. We'll go through the we'll go through the days in the save game. So let's let's go all the way back and let's start with day one. Let's start with day one. Okay, here we are. Wow. Oh god, day one, eh? Day one. Looks like we already got stuff down on foundations too. So it's pretty quick with doing that. Um <laughs> Yeah, wow, look at that, eh? So this is this is basically it. This is basically it, my goodness. Um, so definitely one of my first thoughts I can remember whilst building this was to get concrete going. Um, I mean, you don't have to build stuff on foundations, but if you are into the idea of keeping things organized, building stuff on foundations is a good good way to start that. Um, so lots of concrete, lots of limestone, you know, right into a bin. Concrete stacks like a champ now too, so. Uh, yeah, you just want to get that in there. These foundations are really expensive. Uh, I also have some bins with some other stuff, you know. Plates. You're going to need plates, man. These these foundations, they cost plates now. So, you, you know, stack up as many plates as you do concrete. It's very important. Uh, yeah, it doesn't even look like it started on copper here. So, really just... Oh, actually... Hold on, there is some copper over there. Just kind of following the landscape with the foundations, you know. I ended up rebuilding a lot of this stuff too, eh? You'll notice. You'll notice that. This is this is these this level of foundations, it's all just smelters now. Move the constructors up here. So that's a huge thing too with the design. You've got to be willing to uh, tear down, rebuild. You know, that's uh, always always going to be a thing. You can see lots of this. This this whole area really like the only thing that stayed the same in there uh, is the hub. In fact, uh, every, everything else got like I'm not fixing that. Uh, everything else got moved. Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to keep things, you know, close and simple. Spreading out enough so you don't get too, too jammy. Like, down here, we're, uh... Making the rotors. All the way over here, we're making the plates, you know? Nice spread, but not too far. Got four iron nodes here, so I kind of split them up to do specific tasks. Take a look at uh, day two. Well, actually, I have a day 1.5. It's another six hours, so. Okay, here we are day two, and it looks like we got the space elevator. Wow, look at that. So pretty. So, so pretty. Oh, well, I guess it's day 1.5 anyways. Uh, so I guess this is, this is where I got the AI limiters going on. Right there, yeah. So this is where we started AI limiters. Uh, went out and grabbed that Caterium. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is gonna allow us to start on smart splitters, which it doesn't look like I've implemented yet, but it's on the way, it's on the way. So I don't think there's anything else too major for changes 
in the six hours. Uh, just the addition of the AI limiters, which is like, you know, just a super simple, it's just, you know, copper sheets. It's very similar to uh, iron plates, quick wire, which is very similar to copper wire. And then just combined them into the uh, AI limiters. Oh yeah, actually, look at that. Okay, there we go. I was wondering where the rest of the uh, six hours of progress went. Look at that. Uh, we have some coal. We have some coal power down there. So yeah, that's also a good thing, you know, in case you uh, are totally new to Satisfactory and you're having some real problems with uh, your biofuel. That's gotta be driving you nuts by this point. Coal power. It automatically feeds the first fully automated power you get. Definitely recommend setting it up as soon as you can. In fact, let's go take a quick little look down there without without falling to our death, hopefully. Hopefully. Yay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess coal can be a bit of a struggle with the with the water pumps initially, but uh, it don't don't let it scare you. It really is. It really is quite simple. Uh, they updated the coal generator UI, so it's a lot easier to read now, in my opinion. A lot less guesswork. there you can see one of our coal generators we got our coal belt coming in we got our water pipe going in bam there it is so key pieces of information right here there's your water usage 45 and up here there's your coal usage 15 now they changed power in update 4 it always uses a constant rate this thing is always running at 75 megawatts whether you use it or not it's either on or off there is no more variance in power so these rates are constant constant consumption you can count on it uh, which actually makes it a lot easier to build for so 15 coal per minute that's easy you know uh, if you press n you can get up your calculator we all know 15 times 4 there's your there's your mark 1 belt right there times 8 there's your mark 2 belt so coal coal is easy um, a mark 1 belt can do four generators and a Mark II belt can do eight. And you can just do the math for Mark III and beyond. Water, water's a little different, but not too much. You're using 45 per. So four of those is gonna use 180. Um, as we should know, the Mark I pipe is doing 300 meters cubed. You can see it in the info description of the pipe, so. 180 for four is plenty and fine. Um, if you go up to eight, you hit 360. So that's a problem. There's a lot of different ways to come around this problem. For me, this time, this is what I decided to do. So eight is too many. Seven is too many. So six, six is the limit. That's actually the Mark III belt speed, which is funny because this is water in a pipe. Um, so I built ahead to six, did it all on one pipe. Uh, these extractors are doing 120 water per extractor. So two of them is 240, three of them is 360. So I actually went ahead and built three of them, which is a little bit overkill, but better over than under when you're talking about production. So three extractors, the six generators, and then I made a new pipe. I made a new pipe and I didn't attach them. We'll go, we'll, we'll go forwards. 
and I'll see if I can show you guys that. Yeah, I think we've only got a couple more days. Day two and day three. To catch you guys up on. All right, here we are, another day. Looks like I got my basher. Looks like we're over out by Caterium too. What's up with that? I, I don't know. Right, look at this. We've gotten the smart splitter started. So the smart splitter storage is going. Uh, I showed you guys that at the beginning of the video. So hopefully you understand how that all works and such. Started getting a little fancy here. Looks like we've only got five coal generators. So I think this is going to be a bit of a flyover day. Um... I'm sure I did some very important stuff, like set up the smart storage, but I think uh, we've covered virtually everything that would have been done here. Again, you know, if I, if I glaze over stuff, um, but you guys want to see it more in depth, or you want a more in depth explanation or, or something, just, you know, let me know, let me know. Sometimes it is hard for me to decide what you guys want to see. Yeah, for me, it could seem like there's nothing interesting going on here, but uh, maybe maybe there is something that I'm not thinking about. I can just sort of see the, the organization we're trying to go through. I really struggled a lot with getting my, uh, like, trying to get the output belts going on. Um, one thing that always harshes my organization is you always end up needing to bring parts far across your factory, uh, like having to bring parts all the way from over here to all the way over here, get it onto the sushi belt, get it through the storage. Trying to do that cleanly can be a real head wrecker. Sometimes though, you just gotta lay something down. You'll change it all soon anyways. That doesn't even look like we have our trucks up yet. Day three. Okay, here we are again. Oh, wow, I never scaled up that power. Looks like I'm going to have to load up day four to show you guys that. Uh, we did, however, add in our tractor on this day by the looks of it. Okay, you can see the truck station just down there. The starts of steel. Yeah, steel's pretty easy. All, all I did with steel was, uh just make everything from scratch really like I got coal over there got iron over there so we just made the steel ingots uh, turn those ingots into pipes and beams loading them up on a truck brought them over we just have the belt delivering them in We're just going straight to storage for now start divvying them up later uh, later on there's actually copper down there uh, I start making staters down there I think the last thing I really want to show you guys was what I was trying to touch on with the uh, with the coal. I wanna I wanna try to load that up so we have that visual that visual aid. Just because I know I know coal can be a little tricky. Those heckin' liquids, man.
Uh, I might real quickly go over to just a couple of like awesome little build features I've come across. Like, uh, Update 5 has done a ton for QOL, man. You can do such, such great quality of life things in uh, Update 5. It really makes the whole building process a lot easier. All right, so here we are with all the all the coal power. So you can see we've got our six generators here, and then we've got our additional two. So they all go on the same belt because that Mark II belt can support eight of them. But we go to a new pipe, because that Mark I pipe can only do six. So now we've got a new pipe, and it's gonna do another six, you know? Uh, so for the water extractors themselves, just keep it real simple. Um, what I did for the pipes was I placed them just like this. You can see this guy right here, and we're in the water. So I just placed the um, the pipeline support right up there. Use the, um, if you look to the center of the screen, you'll see the build mode. If you press the R key, you can change it. Uh, the build mode I like for pipes is horizontal to vertical. So that when you build your pipe, it, it goes nice and straight. build it like that and it automatically places nice whereas if you're just on auto places the same because of the distance but you know if this was a little further back you can see the difference see that it's kind of like diagonal but if you use the horizontal vertical see that it goes straight and then 90 degrees so that's a good that's a good build note for pipes um, so what I did was with these ones where I wanted to merge them together I used the pipe junction crosses and so I just used the foundations to measure and just snap them to the pipe like so and that way, I could join them across, keeping it maybe not 100%, but like 99% lined up and attached together. It is worth noting that you could do this even better with walls. If you put a wall there, um, this, see, this will not snap to the foundation, but it will snap to the wall. It will. I actually kind of wish it would snap to the foundation too, but... Uh, if you use walls, you can snap your pumps and everything and be super massively exact, which is just always good. Um, I feel like I've managed to keep it, you know, from... From the naked eye, it looks pretty much perfectly straight, eh? So, I didn't bother with the walls this time. Did a funny little... Soup for the ladder there. Kind of funny, but I like it. Uh, do the pumps earlier than later, right? Like, the water extractor will get the water up like 10 meters or something. Uh, I always recommend putting the pump a little bit early, though, so you can avoid head lift issues. It's just a pain in the neck. Or just build your generators at water level. That's always an option, too. Um, zooping, you know? Just just like how you change your build mode with pipes. Press R to change your build mode with foundations and a few other select items. Uh, you can zoop, which basically means you can build 
up to 10 foundations at once. You can even vertical zoop to do up and down. That's huge, that's huge. Placing an elevator. Want it to face the other direction? No problem, man, just press R. There you go, look at that. See that? Now that's placing in the other direction. So that's huge. That's a big one. R is your friend. R is your friend. Uh, you saw my painted foundations over on the tractor road, yeah? Those are pretty cool, eh? Well, um, if you have those unlocked as well, you have to unlock them in the awesome shop. Just hold E. Just hold E. Worth noting as well, if you tap E, you can cycle through the variants of the buildable you have. You can go from 4 meter to 1 meter to 2 meter. But if I hold E, and then I right click or left click, I can actually select the different cosmetic variations of the block. Now again, you've got to make sure you have these things unlocked. Um, otherwise, you won't get that option. Right, it's all up in the customizer. Which is worth noting, you can open the customizer with X now. Um, it's all new and very confusing, but you'll get used to it fast, I promise. This first swatch, this is your main factory swatch. Change it to the colors you'd like your whole factory to be. You'll notice my factory's all red and yellow, SPLH colors. You'll notice this is red and yellow, that's how you control your main factory color. You've also got swatches for your pipelines, concrete structures, and foundations. So you can color those as you'd like to as well. I actually prefer these to be default for now. Uh, you also have custom swatches you can use to paint things one at a time. Oop. Pretty cool, eh? Actually, the black foundation does look pretty slick, I gotta say. I gotta say! You can just boop it back. I don't even think that costs paint. Like, you can just do that for free. Pretty cool. Uh, you have all these other swatches, too. You can, like, edit them, customize them, whatever you want. Whatever you want. Any color you'd like. Uh, so in addition from the colors, you have your materials tab. Again, you can buy these in the awesome shop. I've only just got the one right now, so, it's, you know, you'll get more as you buy more. Patterns! Oh, I love patterns. This is how I do my roads and stuff. So again, you buy these in the awesome shop. Remember how I was talking about earlier how important it is to get those coupons? Yeah, yeah, it's really important. Start farming those early, guys. The the arrows for the roads. Again, this is all like non-essential, just doodly stuff. But uh, it is a lot of fun. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy this stuff. Now it's worth noting this stuff. You'll see it does cost color cartridges. Color cartridges are like super easy though. Like all, all you need is just some flowers, flower petals. You get them everywhere. Make some color cartridges. Um, you can paint and it's going to cost uh, a paint to do that. You can do the pattern removal and boom, you get your color cartridge back. If you delete the foundation, you will not get your color cartridge back. But no big deal. Those things are basically unlimited anyways. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that covers it. Like, that's basically all of it. Um, didn't look at the lights super close, but they're pretty simple. So, um, yeah, there'll be, there'll be more of these videos, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Wow, man, that's, <laughs> that was a lot of stuff we covered, man. That was a little bit more than I even thought. So, thanks for watching. Hit the sub button, turn on notifications. Join us on Twitch for the uh, live builds and... See you on the next one.